Yo, what's up? It's Dopai, and I'm a Radiant coach, and I even managed to get rank 1. Double initiator, definitely the better comp. You guys have the vibe here. Five manning on pistols, alright. I probably would have went mid door against the KO, just so you don't get suppressed, but yeah, okay. We're going down. <laughs> just perma blind. Yeah, I just can't see anything all around. Oh, it's working, guys. This guy's working. It is working. It is working. I think there's one back Triple there. blind and then dog stunned. That's fun. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Uh, when you're yellow, when you're yellow. Taking this fight here is pretty bad. Last player standing. Bad. 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 <laughs> bad. <laughs> so, you know, obviously a couple of missed shots. I think the obviously the main problem here is that your teammates overpeak. But what we can do a little bit better here is personally I think that going five A main is pretty bad in general. Um but uh, especially against the KO because the KO knife, but luckily our Viper does go deep cave so he dodges it And then you know obviously you're suppressed here so you don't go out But look fade dog clears left here, right? Fade dog clears left and then you know the chamber is on the right So you should have been scaling a lot earlier with this uh, with this dog But instead we opt to get the orb, right? So we get orb and then we can't scale with the dog So that's the problem here. So by the time we go out the dog dies and then you're just peeking nothing so we don't even take advantage of it and then you get mollied off right so getting orb here as a priority for you is pretty bad uh in terms of tempo because we would have been out with the dog if you didn't get the orb and then we would have already been in front of this molly but um that's the first thing i would say this smoke is really good and then you know you get blind again whatever we get into post plant nothing crazy happens here you, it's 4v2 at this point you go back site um, and then we go wall up and then you get bit by dog. So at this point we need to evaluate the situation, right? We want to use bomb plant as like a checkpoint. So as soon as the bomb plant is uh, I guess active and post plant starts you want to look at numbers and then you want to look at where your teammates are. So here we're in a 4v2 and then you guys are triple uh, backside and your viper is pushing up here. So when you see your viper pushed up like this, you, you kind of want to get ready to go through this wall to kind of like fight off his contact because he's playing aggressive. Um, it, it's, in my opinion, worth it to go for this fight. Even though you are up 4v2, uh, it's worth it to go for the trade, in my opinion. Um, but what ends up happening is your viper, you know, he just dies for free and then you sit behind the wall. Um, and then wall drops. And then by this point, like we're, since we're not taking advantage of the viper's contact, um, we need to fall back, which is what we do. Um, but our teammates are completely in the open, and then we don't get the trade here. So, and then, you know, obviously we get into the 2v1 here, we're in like a little pinch. But, at this point, when you know there's one left and one right, you need to commit to a fight. Instead, you're like, you're like, playing really safe here, ducking between cover, and taking a couple of shots, but you're not really going for the kill. It's like you're, you're playing the stall, which, um, doesn't really do anything here. You know, take a couple of shots, duck, take a couple of shots, and you try to duck again, right? So just peek a little bit wider on one of these kills and commit to the fight, and then uh, whichever side you get the kill on, you can play around that that side more heavily because these guys aren't close to you yet. So for example, if you got the kill on the left side here, um, you you could probably like start scaling up this way instead of uh, you know just going back and forth. So okay, wait, that's so smart. Okay, bet. Yeah, so you know, just full commit to that fight, and then you have a couple options. But the the main thing I think uh, at this round is uh, ignore the orb. You know, that's not really important. And then if your if your fate is going to use util, uh, you want you want to follow it early so you don't get stuck in in the main, um, and then KO mollied off. So that was the main thing. But afterwards, post plant was fine, right? And then you could have potentially scaled through the wall to play off of your viper's contact. But it was it was pretty much a misplay by him to to go this aggressive here. Um, but we kind of want to, I guess, capitalize off of his positioning. Um, and then we couldn't because he died pretty quick and we weren't ready for it. And then, you know, your teammates just died to this brimstone. But okay. overall, the yeah. round was pretty well played by you, I would say. You played it pretty safe. We just have to work on the timing of the execute, but it's pretty okay. good. Yeah, so, right? you know, you go before the dog takes space, which is pretty bad, I think. You want to let your dog go a little bit further before you dash. Um, Kind of just to guide you because if this guy is on the left and you're running up, you're just gonna die for free Plus the smoke distance I would say is a little bit too far um, On your dash here. So if this guy was close, right? Um, you'd probably just die because 
you, you start losing speed around this mark, so this guy should be able to track you pretty easily. So it's a little bit better to undershoot your smoke than it is to overshoot in the smoke dash, just, just to be a little bit safer. Uh, the sentry path here. So obviously you smoke, you dash, right? Same thing with the smoke distance. If this guy is close right, you're dead as fuck, but you know, he's yeah. not there. And then you end up going to swing through your smoke here, which I don't really like. Um, I'd rather you no, 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 just no, no, no. go on the right side of your smoke here because you don't you don't throw a flush smoke Right, so there's a gap on the right You can just peek back sight through the right side instead of swinging through a smoke and having that disadvantage um, yeah. So or maybe even just wait your smoke out at this point because we, we gain nothing with the tempo here Like you're forcing this fight and, and throwing your second smoke uh, to, to get like that fight earlier, but it, it doesn't really do anything for you um if anything, it kind of encourages their chamber to swing through the, the Viper wall because it's a little bit of a fatter smoke, right? right. Oh, true. So, um, I mean, we end up There's going through yellow. anyways. And then at this line. point here, like we're talked about on pistol round, bomb plant is, you know, kind of the checkpoint here. And regardless, we're in a 5v5 post plant. So it's good that you're looking for a play, but you want to do it with a teammate or with some util here. So if you look on the mini map, um, Yorena is kind of sitting cleavage and he has a sightline back sight. So if he got contact here and you swung through the wall, then it would have been great. But instead you take a fight and no one's ready to trade you, right? Plus you don't have dash, you don't have smoke, you have nothing. So it's a completely dry fight with no util and no one's supporting you. So let's say there was two guys double peeking you, you'd probably just die for free. But I mean, regardless, this guy dashes out and you get one tapped, right? So yeah. yeah. It definitely would have been better for you to just play off the Rana's contact here and then you and then you go through or you just you know wait and then ask for util from your fade and then you guys could double swing after the bomb plant but um a little too aggressive uh i'm in the right side i'm in this right pyramid. Pyramid. same bad smoke uh, well no this smoke was good to right get side. off the opera here our viper wall right is just pyramid. late and we're going without any util because our fade hasn't used anything so you're kind of just alone here so we're at 5v4 here you probably don't need to make any plays but you do see this guy in the minimap and go for it yeah so I, I i knew that was gonna happen um up 5v4 we don't take this fight but um if you wanted to i would probably swing through backside instead of uh, midside here I feel like the backside fight through the right side of this Viper roll would have been a little bit cleaner. Um, maybe because the angle would be more isolated, right? You just have to look at this line uh, as you peek out this line compared to you go here and then they could be like here and yeah, here yeah. And, yeah. and here and here. So it's a little bit safer, right? Um, compared to just one angle. Okay. But I mean, you go for the play just because you see contact on minimap, so it's not bad. But since we have numbers, it's probably not necessary. Although, we popped dash a little bit too early, but I mean, what are you gonna do? You're anticipating a fight. Um, and then you get into this altercation, you smoke him off and you go past. I think this is good. Um, as soon as the brimstone spotted on the minimap here, I, I don't think you should put any focus on this guy nest. Like, this is what your two teammates are for here. You have this guy, and then you have the viper uh, over here. So, th these two guys are gonna cover your, your window pretty well. And you, you need to be catching uh, this brimstone while your Uranus fighting this guy. Um, in terms of timing, it's a lot better for the pinch to happen that way. But you know, you do throw the smoke and then run and got that guy. And then obviously this guy died. You, you were confused that he died. But now, kind of like before, right? Bomb is going to get planted soon. And then we're going to be in that checkpoint again. So we should be looking at numbers. Um, and it's four, you know, 4v3, but we, we end up going for more here, which is really bad. And I know you're trying to take advantage of this, the fade dog here, but it's like a completely unnecessary peek. And then, you know, he, he gets the kill, and now it's 3v3, so. We realistically probably win this post plant anyways, just because we have a guy in a forward spot. But, yeah, Gary wins it. Oh. Yeah, so he does win it because he's in the forward spot, but that did get way too close. Yeah. yeah, going into defense here. I don't really know why we pop dash. <laughs> Round just starts, we pop dash. If you want to like pop dash early, then you kind of want to use it to, to take space. Okay. So for example, if you pop dash and you push into shop and there's no one there, then you still gain value off your dash because you know that there's no one A and that's your value. 
And if there is a guy there, then you just dash out, right? But instead, we, we pop dash on a safe zone, so it's just going to be a completely wasted dash if they don't come here, um, okay. if that makes sense. So the trade-off here is that you want to use your dash to either make sure that something is clear by, by pushing with it, so you know, going into shop or going into deep cave, um, and then you get info that way, that's your value, or you, you get a fight and then you can get out, and then that's your info slash value. But popping it here for for just a early fight doesn't really make sense if you're playing passive. Oh, you want to know. Don't really like that play. Oh, fuck no, no, it's horrible. It's it's a good aggressive play, but if you're gonna do it, it's better to do it silent and then out. Maybe it's worth using util too. But I um, mean, you start sprinting here, right? So we we don't even get the opportunity to, I guess, sneak up on them. Like you're making so much noise that they're gonna be ready. Right, so it's a little bit better, I think, for you to like just pop knives, go wide like here, and then just hold the angle uh, into the deep line here, and then you can take the fight and then potentially just dash out or tuck or something like that while while your teammate holds your window. But we have no util here. Like, you know, if you did have a KO knife, then you can potentially sprint it or like a recon dart that lands elbow or something like that. But since we're doing it dry, it's a lot. It's a lot better to do it with like element of surprise because you have nothing supporting you at all. We haven't shown any mid presence at all, as well, which I feel like is bad. Hey, smokes. Uh, knife up mid. It's on mid. I don't see anything. Else. You're gonna take solo fight and dies. Yeah. So we're not really playing to, I guess, get a pick here. Like we're just playing top site, but we're not like working for the kill, like. Walking down mid, walking down elbow, maybe walking down halls like you did with the rifle, right? Like just posting up and hoping that they come to your site is like pretty unlikely sometimes, you know, especially if they haven't really gone A that much at the start, which they really haven't. They've only gone A at the start like one, two times, I think. So, okay. When you get yeah, an op, weird. yeah, it's, it's good for you to anchor with the op, right? And that's probably what you're thinking here. Um, play A site while my Viper is B and stuff like that. But, in my opinion, I think it's a lot better if you to like take a piece of the map or get that early kill. So that's typically how you want to play Breeze anyways on, on Jet or Reno or Chamber or something like that. Like getting a elbow control early or walking down mid uh, early to, to take this map control is really big. And if you do it with the op, it doubles up as getting an early pick. So, you know, fighting mid early, you don't see anything, then you just have this aggressive line. So if they come back from A or B, then you can see that and then you can punish the rotate. Um, so I think as Jet on defense, you really want to focus on either taking elbow control or either taking mid control by walking down here. And you'll be surprised that, uh, that so many kills you can get from walking down mid uh, like this because people aren't really expecting it and they're like holding mid door like this. So you just get free kills on the side of the head. Um, so yeah, something to consider. It's a lot better for you, you to, to play these like secondary uh, parts of the map, mid elbow and, and halls, which you did halls really well and you got two flanks but we haven't done mid yet, and this would be a great round to do it, especially since you haven't opt yet. How do you think about it? I'm sorry. If you want to play, let's play. That's an option, chat chill. Smoke it out, B. What's happening? Trans, 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 I need KO4. Enemy kill. Got him. 3v3 here, you probably yeah, hold. Like, so, one main and two uh, backside. It's good main. that you hold this. Oh, backside, nice. Nice shot. Back side. Last back side, last back side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still there. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh. Fucking good round. So you kind of see, right, just from the, like, this is the first round you played mid, and you actually made it to B in time by the time your Raynor was still alive, you know what I mean? So you might have not been there for the initial hit, but you were there in time for your teammates to actually, like, for you to play off your teammates' contact, which is really good. Um, mm. And, the, you know, it's the only time you've been able to do that because we were actually starting mid. Um, but, I mean, you hit really nice shots there, so fuck yeah, good shit. You. Oh. Utility, Utility. Wait, Chambers pushed up there. Yeah. 
You have to know, I guess, the timing on this, but this guy can always go up like this, uh, unless you white swing really fast. So if yeah. we're ever posted, they can always go for that timing. So try to be aware of that. Pika. Yeah, that's the first one I've ever seen. No. Yeah, it, it catches a lot of people off guard. So typically when you peak mid, you want to like hold this angle, or like the run up, and then you peak deep, and then you peak close, and try to clear okay. all of that. That's like the best way to do it. Turn, turn. But be really vocal here. As soon as you get suppressed here, you gotta be like, I can't dash out. You just say that really sucks, and then you get hit by a sky dog, and then your rana continues to go. You know, like, and you say you can't do shit, but it's it's better for you to calm. I can't dash out. Let's wait or something like that, or just wait, wait, wait. I'm suppressed, or just anything. Instead of like, you know, talking about the situation, it's better to like give an actionable calm. Like, okay, I like uh, that. Cancel, wait, or or even just go in. Like, it, it depends on what you want to do, but like you have to decide on something instead of, I guess, just saying stuff to say it. You know what I mean? And yeah, and you're fair. you're the you're the entry here, right? So it's kind of up to you, your pacing to to go. Um, it's pretty much unwinnable. Okay, so I think the main thing on defense is that we just have to contest better parts of the map early, so like we can actually get map control. Um, so the way that Breeze plays, right, is just on, on defense, like, you're gonna just be getting pulled on rotates heavily if they take mid control. Because they can, you know, show pressure here and then just run back to mid door, you know, or, or get into nest, right? So mid control gives them way too many options. Mid door, uh, nest, and tunnel. So we want to we wanna stop that. We want to try to take some part of mid, so if they do try to split, you can punish it. And you'll be fast rotated. So, you know, start the round, go here, go elbow, take this fight. If there's no one there, then you can start flanking. Uh, especially in ranks, people like to five hit a lot, uh, which is what we were doing on attack, right? So no reason that they wouldn't. Um, the other option you can do instead of going elbow is going uh, deep mid. So like I said earlier, you get a lot of kills from people um, not really expecting this. And especially this chamber, right? He was going quick up here and then holding mid door. So if you went down on the right, you would you would probably kill this guy 100% of the time because he's not using any utility to go up mid, he's just walking up. So, um, easy kill here, and you'll get all of mid control. So, that that's the main thing here uh, on defense. We, we went halls a couple times, which is good, and then we fought mid doors like two or three times, which is good, but we mm -hmm. never fought elbow, and we never walked down mid on the, on the right side here. So, definitely yeah. add these two. These are the two more important ones, I would say, is uh, like you, you should be doing one of these, um, I would say like at least for six rounds of defense. So half round, half of the rounds on defense, you need to be doing uh, the mid walk down or the elbow walk down, just cause it's so valuable. And then with your remaining six rounds, you can like either op on a site, um, you know, maybe play B, walk down halls, right? But the majority of your time should be spent in elbow or in uh, in mid. And if, yeah, that, that, that's the, really the only main thing I saw an issue on defense. Since we didn't do any of that, we were end up flanking and, you know, all your teammates were dead or you're rotating in and your teammates were dead. So it just becomes a retake simulator where it feels like you just can't do anything because they're not hitting your site. But if you fight mid or fight elbow or even halls, then, you know, you can at least be part of the game. But uh, yeah, you have any questions?